Hello everybody, this is Seth from the RE Tipster blog. Thanks a lot for checking in. Uh, I want to take just a few minutes here and give you a very quick overview on how I am able to very quickly and effectively research properties so that I know exactly what I'm buying and I don't have to actually drive out to the property and see it myself, but I can get just the basic information that I need in order to just put together an offer, send it out there and see if we can get an acceptance. Now the first thing that I always do in most cases when we're getting a, a lead or a call in from somebody most times you know it's coming in the form of a phone call you know and a lot of times people will leave a voicemail uh, people will just kind of give us the basic information about who they are what their property is and that's really all we need to get started as you can see here this is my offer worksheet it's thorough but it's uh, not overly thorough I mean, basically I can get all of the person's information I can get all the property information and you know inf information about the surroundings enough so that I can actually make a offer and just get the process started. Now usually the first thing that I do is I head over here to Agent Pro 24/7 and if you haven't heard of Agent Pro that's that's fine I hadn't heard of it either until a few few years ago but it's actually a really really cool tool. I believe you can actually sign up for a free trial if you want to just give it a shot but so I'm just going to quick sign in and I can just quick show you how we use this little tool to you know show us exactly everything we need to know about the property okay now as you see it basically just starts by giving us an overview of the whole country just to show you an example here of, of how you would begin researching your property let's say for example the person who is calling their name is John Smith and let's just for instance say that the property is in Kern County California just type that in here it pops up I'm just going to start by typing in the name Smith and let's see what that gives us there now the first thing that we're going to see here first of all a bunch of these little red push pins all over the place and then a big list of properties and this is basically every single registered person in Kern County California that owns a property and their name is Smith okay well hey what do you know there's uh, one right here Smith John so let's uh, let's click on that and see what we can find out. When we click on that, it's going to pop up this little box here, and what it's offering us here is a a profile on the property, all the basic information about it. So I'm just going to hit OK and see what it brings up. And this is really what you end up seeing when it pulls up this property report. And this is just an example that was generated from Agent Pro, just to give you a feel for for what it is. Now, as you see, we're going to scroll down here and uh, let's see here Th this service is actually typically used for real estate agents well, those are the people like the biggest subscribers to this service but it's actually really valuable for people like you and me who are actually just investors because um, a lot of times we're gonna need to get very fast quick access to a lot of the same information that real estate agents are gonna want and just to give you an example <clears throat> first thing we're going to see here is the name of the primary owner and we're going to see first of all the mailing address of where this person lives so you can see in this example the owner lives in Seattle but their property is in California alright so that tells us right away that this is a absentee owner they don't live at the property and those are typically the kind of properties we're pursuing when we're buying investment properties you can see here the assessor's parcel number that's an important number to have got the legal description that's important when you create your purchase agreement you'll want to copy and paste that in there and look at all this information we've got I find out how many bedrooms how many bathrooms square footage of the property with the year it was built you know the, the size of a lot the zoning I mean really a lot of really important stuff that we need to know one of my favorite things about this is you can see the most recent transfer date and you can see here you know, the last transfer date was uh, August 6 2007 and the transfer value is a lot of money two million eight eight hundred fifty thousand the reason this is important and very helpful you can probably already figure it out a lot of times when you're negotiating with uh, sellers who are trying to sell their property I mean they're not gonna really show all their cards to you they're gonna give you a number or a lot of times you just have to fish around for that number and hope that you can get the right one but uh, the interesting thing is in fact you know I'm actually working on one this week where I'm trying to buy a property from somebody and they're not really giving me any clear indication on how low of an offer they're actually willing to accept but I can come here and I actually found out that their most recent transfer value the pr the price that they paid for the property was three hundred dollars okay 
Now that basically tells me I can I can make my offer pretty stinking low and probably have them still walk away with some money. This is really important because if I know how much they have into this property, that tells me a lot about how low of an offer they may or may not be willing to accept. Now, you know, this isn't always the whole story. In fact, it usually isn't. A lot of times there are things that we just don't see or know that aren't included in this information. But it's a really good starting point just to figure out, okay, where is this person kind of coming from? How much do they think the property is worth? How much do they invest in the property? So that's just really good information to know. As you scroll down this document, you're also going to find, you know, assessment and tax information. This is just some helpful, you know, supplemental information to have. You're also going to see a parcel map here, which is very helpful. And I'm going to show you more about that in just a second. And then another great thing is comparables in the area, okay? This basically outlines, based on your property statistics, a lot of similar properties in the area that have recently sold. And again, these are just examples, but usually you'll see properties sold in the past six months or so. And, uh, you know, you can get an idea for, I mean, how much would your property be worth? You know, I mean, how much is this property or ones like it, what are they going for? And then you've got the transaction history for this property. This is another pretty helpful thing that I've always found really interesting, is to find out not only how much did the seller pay for this property when they bought it, but how much did the previous buyers and sellers pay for it? You know, I mean, what, what historically has this property been bought and sold for? You know, you'll just really get a lot of information on, you know, the different prices that have been paid. And this is really helpful, again, in figuring out, you know, how much do you want to pay for this property? And then down here, we've also got foreclosure activity. And this is, you know, fairly helpful to know just uh, if there's a lot of foreclosures in the area. I mean, a lot of times that can affect your property's value as well. And you don't want to be in a neighborhood where everybody's going belly up on their mortgages. So, again, this is good information to have. And then also we've got uh, information on who the neighbors are on the property. And then demographics. This stuff basically just shows you some general information on the population. You know, is the population growing? Is this, you know, is this property in the path of growth? It doesn't usually matter a ton, but it's not bad to know. And keep in mind, I mean, this is something that real estate agents use, and they print these off pretty regularly and give them to their clients when they are interested in buying these properties. And you can do the same thing for your uh, for your clients. I mean, once you buy a property and you're looking to sell it, I mean, this is a great uh, report that you can provide just to give them all the information and um, if it serves your purpose. If it doesn't serve your purpose, then don't do it. You know, if it's something that's helpful, it's not bad to have. And with Agent Pro, when you do the cheapest plan, for, I believe you can pull 50 of these per month. So it's pretty generous. I mean, most people aren't buying that many per month anyway. But, you know, you can really get a lot of this information just as part of the normal paid subscription. So now that we've got that, I'm going to show you how you can use this information to just really quickly evaluate your property and figure out whether or not you want to make an offer and if so how much to make an offer for now usually most of this stuff you know owner's name phone email that kind of thing you're gonna get when somebody leaves you a voicemail uh, or when you talk to them on the phone or if they email you you know mailing address city state and zip that's all in the uh, in the property profile report again that's right here so you just enter that stuff in the property street address same kind of thing it's right here so you plug that into the uh, into this thing here and then property characteristics some of this stuff you're gonna be able to find out pretty easily sometimes you'll just have to ask specifically for it and the size that stuff is all in the profile report transfer date transfer value that stuff is all in the, in the report as well and then listing information a lot of times what I'll try to do is I'll ask the seller do you have this property listed with a realtor right now uh, and if so you know you can even call them and uh, get some more information from that person at the very bottom here talks about the parcel map and this is another important thing you'll want to get. Just to give you a quick example here, I'm going to search by one other criteria here in Kern County, and that is by the parcel number. And I'm just basically going to pick an example from down here, the same property we just looked at, uh, owned by John Smith. Okay, I'm going to type that parcel number in here, it's 0106411, and just search for it. And as you'll see here, it will actually bring us right to that property with a parcel map around it okay so this is almost like getting a little survey on the property now granted these lines aren't always perfect it's usually very close and it's close enough to serve the purpose that you need you can also even do a bird's eye view I'll just expand this a little bit as you can see this is really helpful stuff I mean you can 
can zoom in, see the property where the lines are. You can even rotate it and see it from different angles. I mean, this is the kind of thing that, I mean, this wasn't available two or three years ago, you know, and <laughs> this stuff is very easily accessible now, and you can evaluate properties from across the country now without even seeing them. I mean, if you can find this kind of stuff, you can get a really good idea for the type of property you're dealing with just by looking at these maps. So that is how we get the parcel map. So there's there. And usually what I do is I just do a screenshot of this and just save an image of it for my file just so that I can remember, oh yeah, it was that property. Go back to the spreadsheet here. <clears throat> Assessed value. Again, that's something that is in the, uh, in the profile report. If we zoom down here, there's the assessed value. Now, assessed values, they mean something a little bit different in every state in the country. So really, the only reason for putting in the assessed value is on the assumption that you understand what that means. So valuation sources, something that I almost always do with properties like this, I go to a website called Trulia.com, and Trulia.com is actually extremely helpful. <laughs> Some other websites you could use would be something like Zillow.com or even Realtor.com. Really all we're looking for are other examples in the neighborhood of this property to find out exactly what that value is. So really what I always do is I just get the zip code and I plug it in here. And under property type, I do you know the same property that I'm looking at, single family home. And I really just go down the list and I say, okay, I know that my property is three bedrooms, one bathroom. Well, let's see. Here's one that fits that criteria. And this one's going for $205,000. So I'm going to take that URL, bring it over here, and just paste it. We'll go back here. Let's try to find another one here. Three bedrooms, one bath. Here's another one. Now this one is $199,000. Okay. Go back to the Excel spreadsheet and paste it in there. And go back to Trulia. Let's find one more. Three bedrooms, one bathroom. Here's another one. And this one's a foreclosure. And, you know, if it is a foreclosure, that's something just to keep in mind because it doesn't necessarily reflect full market value. But really the prices that we saw was about 113000 199,000 and 205,000. I mean, none of those listings in and of themselves should tell you what your property is worth, but it should just give you an idea. Okay, I mean, what general price range are properties being listed for? What this does is it tells you what kind of competition are you going to be up against if you're trying to sell this property? Are you going to be able to price beneath these people and sell it quickly, or are you going to be stuck at that price or higher? So this really gives some good information on what your limits are going to be and, and if you're going to be able to be competitive with them or not. And then down here, overall comments, if there's any particular thing that you found out about the property that is worth noting. Just for example, I'll put here, you know, nice property, nice neighborhood, seems like a good deal. And that's just kind of my notes when I want to go back to this file and remember what I thought about it. That's what I thought. So based on the different uh, property values that we saw, you know, if I want to sell this thing in six months or less, what am I going to have to sell it at? A lot of times what I'll do if I really want to be safe is I'll actually call a few realtors in the area and ask them that question and say, hey, you know, if I want to move this thing very quickly, what would you say I have to price it at? And a lot of times you get very different opinions from different people, but um, it basically just gives you a more educated opinion from somebody who's actually in that market for what you need to do. So let's just say if the, you know, if the quick sale price that we came up with was $150,000, put there, um, if there's any back taxes owed on the property, you would put that here. In this case, we're just going to say no. All the taxes are current. Purchase and closing costs. A lot of times I just put in a standard, you know, a couple thousand bucks to cover that. And then also closing costs on the selling end when you're going to resell the property. Put a thousand bucks in there. Now, <clears throat> if you look below here, uh, these boxes tell you some pretty interesting things. Using these numbers up here as the calculation, it gives you a few different offers that you can make on the property. Now, if these people, if you know they are desperate and they have no other options, you could make them the minimum cash offer amount, which in this case would be 13800 bucks. That's 10% of your gross profit if you were to sell it at 138000 
And as you see, you can also do a medium cash offer or, or a maximum cash offer, all the way up to 30% of your gross profit amount. And really the purpose for spitting out three possible offer prices like this is because it sort of gives you some wiggle room so that no matter what you do, you're going to get a great deal. But depending on what you've sensed from the seller on their level of motivation, and if they're really not that motivated, but you still want to make an offer anyway, then you might want to do the 30% offer amount. And then beneath there, based on whichever offer price you choose, you can also see your net profit from the deal. So really, this is the worksheet that I use whenever I'm putting together offers. And really what I do is whenever I get a new lead, I create a new a new uh, Excel file just like this. And I go through it, and um, that's kind of how I do things. So it's worked great for me. I've, uh, it's helped me to really streamline my research process and not waste hours and hours and hours researching things. I just kind of, on average, spend somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes per deal just to kind of really get a good idea for what I'm doing before I send the offer and make sure that I'm, you know, as educated as I can be about the property before I invest, you know, several hours of my time. So, yeah, that is really the, uh, the gist of how to do it. If you'd like to download this Excel spreadsheet for yourself, I've actually included a link at the bottom of this post that you can use to just download it and use it for whatever your purposes are. If you wouldn't mind, I mean, feel free to leave a comment below this video. Um, if you're on the blog, feel free to leave a blog comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to leave a comment there. Let me know, you know, how this is able to help you, if it has helped you, what you think it could do for you. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, let me know. I mean, if you need more explanation or if there's something else I can do to help you figure out this process and streamline your research to be more effective, I'd love to help you. So as you can see, Agent Pro is a pretty helpful tool, especially for real estate investors like us who are trying to get property information, pull lists, things like that. I personally don't know of any tool out there that's better than this. I mean, it's been just a really awesome resource for me. So if you're watching this right now and you're thinking to yourself, you know, this is good. I got to get in on this. Then there's really a couple things that you can do. First of all, if you want to do a free trial, you can go right down here, click on that button and just sort of follow the prompts and uh, do what you need to do. But, I mean, if you see this and you just you know right off the bat this is what you need and you want to pull the trigger and sign up, all you have to do is go right up here to the Sign Up Now button. And the first thing that you're going to see is this right here. And what you're looking at right here are all of the different types of subscriptions that you can sign up for. And something that you'll obviously see if you look over here to the right uh, is really just the cost per month. And, you know, they can be, you know, pretty expensive all the way down to pretty cheap. If you're looking to run a business like the one that I do, you're probably going to want to go with either this one right here, the bronze subscription, or the profile package over here. And the only real difference is with the bronze subscription, you're going to want to choose this one if your primary purpose is just to pull lists for direct mail purposes. If that's what you're after and that's all you really want to do, then that's probably the best choice for you. On the other hand, if you want to use Agent Pro to actually do a lot of property research, pull up property profile reports and figure out you know, transaction history, market values, locations, addresses, all this stuff. In that case, you'll probably want to do the profile package because it allows you to pull up to 50 full profiles per month. Personally, my business model doesn't really require me to, you know, pay a ton of money for these really expensive subscriptions, but I know that there are some business models out there that actually require this kind of thing if you want to get foreclosure data or, or mortgage information or all of that stuff. If that's something you need, then by all means, feel free to sign up for some of these. So whichever one you want to do, I want you to pay attention to something here because this is a trick that not many people know about. If you go right up here to the partner ID box, all you have to do is enter in this code, CFG. R S H. And when I click update, I want you to pay attention to what happens to all of these numbers here. Because once I do that, all the prices for everything across the board goes down 10%. And that's not just the savings on one month. That's a permanent savings for the life of your subscription. So you'll definitely want to enter that code in and save yourself some money over the long haul. Once you've got your subscription shows, and I'm just going to pick that one for now, go next and this window right here I don't really do anything with you can just sort of hit next again and then this one again you just hit next again it just kind of summarizes the prices for you and in this step right here it's really just the usual drill where you fill in all your contact information and choose a password and all that but one thing I want to draw your attention to is the fact that all of these fields are actually required fields as you'll see by these little asterisks right here and obviously that's no big deal until you get down here when it asks for your real estate license number I get a lot of questions from people who say you know Seth I can't get through because I'm not a real estate agent I don't have that license number and I'll just tell you right now it's okay all right all you gotta do if you're an investor is just type the word investor in here all right, 
and then you'll have something in that field and then you'll be able to click on to the next one and keep moving forward. In the next couple of steps you'll have to enter in your payment information and make your first payment and get started and that's really all there is to it. It's not too complicated. So thanks again for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you got any questions you can always feel free to call this support number here. I know I've called it a couple times and usually they can help me with whatever it is that I need. So feel free to reach out to them if you need any help and uh, yeah I wish you all the best and go out there and find some deals. Good luck.